Benjamin Ferguson is the reason that in Chicago we live surrounded by some very beautiful pieces of public art. When he died in the early 1900s, he left money that funded the creation of some pieces of art that we still adore. From Jackson Park and Hyde Park up to the Lincoln Park Zoo, out to Logan Square, and especially at the Art Institute, where one of my favorite places in the entire city is, the Fountain of the Great Lakes in a beautiful courtyard. During his lifetime, Ferguson lived surrounded by beauty himself in a house that he built here in 1893 in the Jackson Park District that at the time was very fashionable, now a historic district. And you can see on the facade alone the sorts of things he appreciated. There are carvings in the stone, there are these very beautiful front doors, but behind the doors there's a whole lot more to see. Ferguson was in the lumber business, so one of the first things you notice when you come in is all the very beautiful wood. The door frames going up to these 12-foot ceilings, carved, very ornate. There's more woodwork we'll see later, but we also need to check out this fireplace that I'm absolutely in love with. It's made of white honey onyx, and it's just splendid. There's another fireplace, more ornate, but wood, in the dining room. You've got all these great details, including working pocket doors. The original pocket door is still intact with their original hardware. Those between the living and dining room, but also these, and there's a reason to look at these. There's another piece of the history visible on these doors. Original hardware, and then this from about the 1950s. At one point, this house was divided up into 13 rental units. The owner lived on this part of the first floor. This was her lock, and so when restoration was done in the 80s, they kept this as a memory of what the house had been. Because the house went through some difficult years, there are some details that are gone, but that were recreated. We're seeing a lot of stained glass. Most of it was brought in during the restoration. The only original stained glass is in a bathroom here on the first floor. And then some other things have been recreated, like the cabinets in the kitchen pick up what was original. There were just a few left. The cabinets and their hardware recreated during the restoration. Now again, that was done in the 80s, so the kitchen is something that somebody today, 30 years later, may want to do more with. The great thing is, starting in that space, you have a lot of clues for where you should go. There are the very tall windows that are throughout the house. There's a lot of wood. So it gets you started on something that might have some of the grandeur of the rest of the house. And speaking of grandeur, we've got to see the centerpiece of this house. The staircase in this house is magnificent. Now, this guy was in the wood business, and he used a lot of wood in this two-story staircase he created. It's wrapped in mahogany and walnut paneling, and then there are further tributes to trees in these carved panels. There are oaks and dogwoods that repeat all the way up in the newels. And when I say all the way up, I mean up to the second and again to the third floor. We're standing at the beginning of the stairs to the third, the top floor was not inferior. Sometimes you see it all sort of go away. The quality goes away. But here, the top floor and the second floor together shared that grandeur of the wood. So what you've got now is two floors of bedrooms that you can work with. You have essentially six large spaces. On this floor, the second floor, there is what's now a two-room master suite with a very beautiful fireplace and sort of a family room, billiards room with that second onyx fireplace in what would have been the ladies' parlor. Above, on the third floor, there are an additional three rooms. There are bedrooms at either end, and then a large room in the middle that would have been some sort of social space, men's lounge, something like that. It's got a great view all the way to the Sears Tower. So on these two floors, those six rooms and a few, bed a few bathrooms, you can reapportion them to suit another family layout, playrooms, bedrooms, whatever you're going to do, because there's a lot of space to work with and a lot of space outdoors as well. There's a very beautiful side garden, and then there's this big backyard. You also have behind me here a two-apartment coach house, both rentable, so you've got some income property. You know, this neighborhood, when Ferguson got here in 1893, was very fashionable, but then it changed a lot. It went way down. It has come back up over the years. You've got across the street from us, Whitney Young, one of the city's great schools. And beyond that, all the great things that have happened in the West Loop over the last 10, 15 years to really bring it back up and make it a fashionable neighborhood. Looks like Benjamin Ferguson knew what he was doing 120 years ago.